Hi, how are you doing? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this sketch effect using Adobe Photoshop. Now, this is a really, really simple and easy process to do. So I'm going to walk you through the process and show you how it's done. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to come back to the beginning and you can see there we've got pretty much a standard image. You can take any image you want and it will work really, really well. So the first thing we want to do is come up to our layers panel at the top here. Come down to the very bottom and then we want to select solid color and we want to just bring the cursor all the way down to the bottom left there so we get pure black and press OK. Next, what we need to do is come to our image. Now, yours has got a lock on like mine. Click on the lock and then just drag that down to the trash can at the bottom there. And then we want to push the image above the color fill layer there. Next, we want to make a layer mask. So come down to the bottom here, click on the layer mask there, and then we can see this one is white. We want this to be black. So press Control or Command I and that will invert the layer mask. You can hold down the Alt or Option key and select the layer mask and then that will automatically do an inverted one for you. So next we want to come over and you want to select your brush tool. And then come to the top where your brushes are. And we want to make sure that we're using a hard brush for this. So let's just select the hard round brush make sure the hardness is at 100 percent there and um, with the pixels we want this to be quite small so anywhere between five and seven pixels works really really well so once you've done that then just click out of there and then come to the flow and just pull this down to 80 percent so what we want to do with this is a little bit like the techniques that you used to get when you was a kid them little scratch things i don't know if you ever had them as a child so you, you scratch away and you take away all the uh, all the top layer. So to obviously to do that, we're going to need to change the color here to white. So just click on the little arrows there and it will change to white for you. Or you can press X as well and that will reset the colors if you've got a color there. So now it's just a case of drawing. So there is no technique to this. Be as random as possible. So just click every now and then just let go of the mouse if you're using a mouse or if you're using a Wacom tablet and just make sure you click and dab just so that when we come to our history there you can see we've got these little steps we can go back if we need to okay so let's just carry on doing this now what's really cool about this is that eventually the picture starts coming through but for a while it seems like you're not doing anything or it's not working but it does it does work as you've seen a minute ago you'll also notice as well that this particular image at the minute is still color the other one I did change to black and white it will work in color but I think the black and white has something a little bit more artistic about it so that's why I changed it to black and white so you can see here I'm not doing any kind of pattern whatsoever I'm literally just scratching away just going over releasing the mouse every 20 or 30 steps so to speak and just making sure that I get all the bits that I want so you'll end up as well with areas like this where there is big areas of black here so you can either just zoom in and then you can just make sure that you've got all the areas that you want to cover so it's not paramount that you fill every single black bit in at all sometimes it can look better when there is breaks um, sometimes it can look better when it's full, full all the way up so yeah it really depends on the image and the style and technique that you like but this is a really, really fun process. And uh, yeah, it reminds me of them, them scratch pads, I suppose that's what I'm gonna call them, where you'd scratch away um, and silver would come through, if that makes sense. So it's got a Hetcher Sketcher vibe as well, hasn't it? Because it's all just one line. So as you can see here, this is starting to now take shape, isn't it? So like I said, I'm being as random as I possibly can. There's no sort of technique to this. I can go around in circles. I can go around up and down. It really doesn't matter. But the main things you want to concentrate on if you're doing a portrait would be the eyes first and then the mouth second. Because as humans, the first thing we look at on a portrait is always going to be the eyes and then it's going to be the mouth. And that's a, uh, that's a predatory thing, actually, because we need to find out if the person's friendly 
and we can do that with the eyes and then we can also gauge if they're smiling or angry as with their mouth so that's hardwired into every human so that's why when you're doing a portrait you really want to concentrate on their eyes and the mouth so i'm going to speed this right up now and just call this done just for the sake of the tutorial otherwise you're going to see me just doing this for the next 20 minutes so there you go you can see that is uh, a semi-finished process there so now what I want to do is come back to the layers panel and I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to select hue and saturation and I'm just going to bring the saturation down to zero that's going to turn it to black and white and then I'm going to come down to the bottom again select curves and I just want to add some contrast back into this because it is quite flat meaning the black grays and whites and whites are flat and we need to make some more contrast in them tones so that's why we do this so let's just push the white at the top here you can see i'm pushing that up and the blacks i'm pulling down and then this area is going to be our grays so i can pull and push and it always works if i pull it this way just put it out a little bit and say okay to that you can also if you want to just come and use um, on here the brightness and contrast you can do that and just click forward i like to kind of gauge this afterwards and maybe just add a little bit more in just helps um, with the overall finish you can see that's added a little bit more contrast and a little bit more depth there and you can see the difference on what that does is quite severe so uh, yeah it's well worth doing so that is how you do it that's all you need to do let's come to our history click on the little camera there let's go back to the beginning so this was the original picture this is the one that i've just done with you guys this is one that i was messing around with earlier so you can see there are different strokes you're going to get different finishes it's going to look completely different every time I actually quite prefer this one it's got more of a sort of uh, some really really interesting shapes going on in there so that's really really interesting so yeah the next thing you can do then if you are finished you just come to layer just come to flatten image and then you can go to file and then save as a copy and then you can save that as you want anywhere you want on your computer so there you go pull that one and let's go to desktop save there we go that is it done i hope you've enjoyed that it's really really interesting and uh, yeah you can get some really really funky effects with this so i look forward to seeing your images take care i'll see you in the next video Bye bye